All right, the state legislative session wrapped up a few weeks ago and a lot happened. Here to talk all about that and also for some future sessions to come is the Louisiana State Senator for District 5, Mr. Royce Duplessis. Senator, thank you so much for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Darrell. So first I got to ask you, uh, your overall thoughts, how do you feel like this previous session had to go? Overall, I think we had some good wins. We made some significant investments that we hadn't made before because we had a historic surplus in revenue where we had to vote as a body with two thirds to what we call extend and bust the expenditure limit. So we had to, to exceed that. We all had to vote to spend this revenue in a way that we all had to agree upon. And in a lot of ways, we did the right thing by investing in early childhood education, investing in paying down our debt, investing hundreds of millions of dollars into infrastructure. So we, we saw a lot of wins, but unfortunately we learned at the very end that there were some very uh, unfortunate cuts that were being proposed. And uh, that's something that we still have to work through. So we didn't go as far as we should have gone with making teacher pay raises permanent and other things. So we had some, some wins. We had some, uh, some real setbacks, a lot of uh, culture war legislation targeting the LGBTQ community. Uh, so overall, I would say it was mixed. One of the things you talked about and did this session was the Council on Black Men and Boys. Briefly, kind of tell our viewers what that is all about. Sure, so this is the Council on the Success of Black Men and Boys. So just to give you a little bit of historical perspective quickly, it was originally created back in 2008 as the Council on the Social Status of Black Men and Boys. This was actually created by former Congressman Cedric Richmond when he was a state representative. Then in 2018, former state representative Ted James recreated the commission, the council, and expanded the scope to focus on the success of black men and boys. I am now serving as the chair of this council. And what we're trying to focus on, Darrell, is policies, statewide policies that are going to be intentional and focused around ensuring that black men and boys in this state uh, that we're passing policies that put them on a the path towards success. So whether we're talking about health and wellness, specifically around mental health, trauma, whether we're talking about higher education and, and graduation rates, whether we're talking about uh, wealth and uh, financial literacy and understanding how to manage money and workforce development, workforce training, all these policies that we're dealing with on the state level, we want to put a, a heightened focus on the success of black men and boys because it's critical. That is amazing what yeah. you guys do, especially for yeah. black men yes, and, right. and young boys out there. Finally, really quickly, mm -hmm. we've, we're done with this session. Now we've got to focus on the fall session. Yes. One of the bills that you're going to introduce is incentives for first responders. Yes. Uh, that includes a $2,500 uh, tax uh, uh, tax exemption yeah. uh, for first responders. So for our viewers out there, how important is that to attract first responders, especially here in New Orleans with the police officer shortages we're having here? Well, you just hit the nail on the head. New Orleans is, is suffering. We're in a crisis right now. And I know that NOPD is now taking over recruitment again for trying to get men and women to join the force, but we are down severely. New Orleans is suffering with this. Parishes across the state are suffering with this. Cities across the country are suffering with this. But what we've learned in, in talking with men and women uh, who have either left the police force or are thinking about leaving the police force is that incentives like these matter. So you mentioned uh, the legislation. We actually passed the legislation this past session and what it will be is a constitutional amendment on the ballot this upcoming fall where voters will be able to decide to give local governments the authority to opt into a program which will give first responders an ability to get uh, a, a property tax exemption as a way to recruit and retain first responders because we know that this is a crucial shortage that we have right now. So we're hoping that we can get the support of the people this, this fall when it's on the ballot in November. And, as, and it's just a small step, but it's one step to try to, to try to deal with the issue of shortages for our first responders. Anything we could do to help those, especially those first responders out there in the city of New Orleans especially. That's right. Senator Royce Duplessis of District 5, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate thank it you. and best of luck to you later on for next session. Thank you. Thank right. you, Darrell. Yes, I sir. appreciate it.